25 in 25 is presented by Lawrence Technological University. Possible is everything. The Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. Hungry Howie's Dough Raiser. Your next fundraiser comes with flavored crust. And National Coney Island, home of the official craving of summer. National Coney Island, doggone good. What's up, State Champs Nation? Hey, it's time for another installment of our 25 in 25 series. Last year, we ranked the top 25 running backs over the past 25 years. We now turn our attention to the quarterbacks. I'm your host, Lauren Plant. Now, before we begin, know this. We are concentrating on high school careers with little emphasis on what they would do at the next level. With that said, here we go. Number 25, Joe DiGiorgio, Utica Eisenhower. We start the countdown with our winner of our fan vote, Eisenhower's Joe DiGiorgio. Along with his brother John, Ike's Iron Man Joe excelled on both sides of the ball and special teams. This 2001 Dream Team captain garnered nearly 5,000 yards of total offense his last two years with 42 touchdowns through the air. He's as close to Friday night lights as you can find. I think the key to his success is that he got all the other players to play for him. He was the leader of the team. He was like a brother. Nobody was gonna let him down. And they knew that on any play where he had the ball in his hand, if we called it a pass, it could turn into a run. <laughs> you know, he'd, he'd make a play and make it happen. And so they all played with tremendous confidence because of that. What he brought to the table was he learned, he was coachable, he executed an offense, made plays on his own, improvised. He was a playmaker and a leader, and that's what made him so unique. And he wasn't, you know, the biggest kid. He wasn't that prototype 6'4", 200. He was just a great athlete who did everything I asked of him and more and led our team in so many different respects. DiGiorgio went defense for college as a strong safety for both the University of Buffalo and Saginaw Valley State. Number 24, Damon Dowdell, Detroit Henry Ford. Our first of six QBs that went on to play ball at Michigan State, Damon Dowdell was lights out through the air and a speed demon on the ground for Ford. This included a 1999 PSL championship over Cast Tech. Damon's senior campaign saw him throw for over 2,000 yards with 29 touchdowns. He rushed for 600 more yards with nine more TDs. In just two seasons under center, Dowdell rewrote the Trojan record book. He was probably one of the smoothest passers that I've ever seen. And so, and his passes did not even have to be vertical deep down the field things that we would we saw from Matt Baker and guys like that. He would his fakes, everything he did was so smooth and methodical, he would draw your eyes into him, and then he would dump off a screen pass. He just oozed confidence, and his team played with it. Damon had phenomenal statistics, backed it up with a lot of wins. Uh, you can tell that he received coaching well, and you know, again, just the leadership ability just exuded. I mean, he just uh, was phenomenal as far as leading his team in the right direction and, and doing the things that is required, you know, to be a successful high school football player. I think the most important thing I remember about that deal was that he knew how to extend the play on that boot. Mike Marshall did his little boot with him all the time. And he knew how to extend the ball all the way to the right to the edge of the sideline. He either throw it or he step out of bounds. <laughs> and right there at the edge. And it gave him more life, gave him more length to the play. And he knew how to extend it. And that was something good, that was something good that was taught, and I remember that a lot. Dowdell was a spot starter during his Michigan State career and later found pro success during the inaugural season of the Saginaw Sting in the Continental Indoor Football League, leading them to the 2008 championship. Number 23, Antonio Bass, Jackson. There are a lot of guys who can beat you in a variety of ways on our list. Jackson's Antonio Bass was a three-sport stud who was considered one of the best athletes to come out of the state in decades. At quarterback, Bass loved to tuck it and run. In his three seasons under center for the Vikings, Antonio ran for almost 2,200 yards. 
His school record 45 touchdowns included a thousand yards through the air as well. Ranked the 2004 Detroit News number one blue chip in the state, Bass was also a super prep All-American. He just ran with abandon and had great speed. I mean, he was a track star, but he had the upper body strength to, you know, to shed tacklers too. He was almost a freak out there, the way he was able to, to play different positions and play him so well. Antonio chose Michigan, and after freshman year flashes that had Wolverine fans fired up, a freak 2006 spring game injury in which the doctor said looked like Bass had fallen out of a three-story building straight on his leg, Antonio never laced them up again. Number 22, J. Rue Campbell, Cass Tech. Infamous for several incidents his final year of high school that included a suspension and jail time his senior season, it was a performance of Castex J. Rue Campbell's early years that put this dual threat dynamo in the countdown. After decades of disappointment, J. Rue was a major reason the technicians tide turned from being pretenders to contenders. Campbell led the technicians to back-to-back -to -back titles in 2011 and 2012. As a freshman, he set a new final state record with five touchdown passes. I always kid Tom Wilshire, we won the state championship for him by knocking out the first quarterback. So they put Jay Rue in there and he was outstanding. He actually only played a part of the game. I didn't know much of him from that game, but we had seen him in passing league in the next year. And I knew how, how good of an arm he had. And uh, he, he obviously uh, led them that year, which is amazing. When I first met Jay Rue Campbell, he was a kid who has a, a very big heart for competition. He was a kid who, uh, who didn't like to lose, he wants to win at all. I don't care if it was pitching pennies or who could spell a word right, he wanted to win, he was very competitive. And that competitiveness is what really excelled him at being a great quarterback. I mean, even though fragile at some things, but he overcame them, he became successful no matter what he did, and he just really shined as a freshman because he wanted to win and he wanted to be the best and he worked hard at being the best. He didn't want anything to be given. Everything had to be earned. And I actually thought he was an outstanding kid. You know, we used to talk from time to time. He would always be at our field working out, and I think what made him the player that he was on the high school level, and I'm sure still now, was his work ethic. I mean, he would be up on our field when we were in summer school. He, you know, he'd be out there with two or three guys um, just about daily, and you know, he put the work in, and that's why he was so successful, because of the work ethic that he had. J. Rue worked his way back to a second chance and won the 2016 Junior College National Championship as the quarterback for Garden City, CC, in Kansas. Campbell is currently finishing his college football career playing for Tony and East at Ferris State. Number 21, Lloyd Abramson, Birmingham Seahole. If you don't know who he is, you should. The 6'3", 220-pound Abramson terrorized Oakland County defenses during his high school career. In the old, tough Southeast Michigan Conference, Abramson led an offense that outscored its divisional opponents 471 to 200. An All-American, Abramson threw for 3,600 yards in his career with 35 touchdowns. Abramson was the second highest recruit in the country in 1993. You know, he kind of put Seahome on the map. They were a win winner every year that he played there, made the playoffs consistently. Technically, he was definitely one of the best quarterbacks, not only of that era, but if you take, you know, film footage of him and, and present it with some of the other great quarterbacks, he was right there as far as his technical ability. With powerhouse programs such as Miami and Penn State vying for his services, Abramson chose Northwestern. After earning the starting nod in the spring of 95, just prior to the first practice of the season, Abramson abruptly quit football, stating he was simply burned out. That Northwestern team went on to win the Big Ten and the Rose Bowl. I want to be a dermatologist, and though a lot of universities tried to recruit me for basketball, Lawrence Tech had the science curriculum that I wanted. LTU Southfield campus is a great place to learn, and the classes are small enough that I don't have to wait for office hours to talk to my professors. They're usually right by my side, challenging me and guiding me toward a successful future. Lawrence Tech. Possible is everything.
The high school football season always starts in Detroit with the Zenith Prep Kickoff Classic. Three days, seven games. Michigan's top teams and players competing at Wayne State University with these great matchups on Thursday, August 23rd, Friday, August 24th, and Saturday, August 25th. Tickets on sale now at participating schools. For more information, visit DetroitSports.org. The Zenith Prep Kickoff Classic. The season starts here. Fundraising should be fresh, flavorful, and simple. We have the perfect solution at Hungry Howie's. Dough Razor. Your team or school can sell paper pizza certificates that can be redeemed for one medium pizza at participating locations. This fundraiser has been awesome for our squad. We've made a lot of money. Very easy to do, it's very quick to do, and it's very effective. Go to doughraiser.com to learn more and sign up. Your next fundraiser comes with flavored crust. Welcome to Hungry Howie's Dough Razor. Welcome back to State Champs 25 in 25, ranking the top quarterbacks of the last 25 years. Number 20, Craig Krenzel, Utica Ford. During the late 90s, the man in the Mac Red, Craig Krenzel was a six foot four, three sport star. And although this three year starting signal caller may not have seen his Falcons garner a ton of team success, in 1998, he connected on 60% of his passes with 25 touchdowns. Good enough to be named All-American Honorable Mention by USA Today. We were together an enormous amount of time. He was conscientious, he was coachable, he was smart, and he was a very good athlete. And things just came pretty natural to him. And I think all his training is what helped pay off. His height, being able to uh, go anywhere in the field, and his, his ability to run at any time, you know, and take the ball himself. I think that's what scared you the most. I've seen him destroy teams, you know, three, four hundred yards in games, and the way he would uh, pick people apart, he was so smart. Recruited by Ohio State in his first collegiate start, he beat the Wolverines in Ann Arbor for the first time in nearly 15 years. Krenzel led OSU to the 2002 National Championship and was named MVP. Drafted by the Chicago Bears in 2004, he was forced to retire two years later due to an elbow injury. Number 19, Ryan Van Dyke, Marshall. In the mid to late 90s, Ryan Van Dyke had everybody saying, we are Marshall. 6'5", 225 pounds, Van Dyke was flat out one of the top recruits in the nation. Ryan rallied the Red Hawks to back-to-back -back Double B State Finals, winning it all his junior campaign. Although unsuccessful in the Silver Dome in 97, Van Dyke threw for 2,000 yards with 25 TDs his senior year. A big athletic kid that if things did not work out at quarterback, they could have put him somewhere else. And that's what Van Dyke reminded him. A big, big, strong kid, threw the ball well, and if he had to run you over at times, he'd run you over. Unfortunately, Van Dyke got hurt early and often in his career at Michigan State. He did, however, have a brief stint in the NFL and the Arena League, including one dream season in 2004 as Ryan led all NFL Europe in passing, touchdowns, and total offense while with Germany's Cologne Centurions. Number 18, Jermaine Gonzalez, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. The 6'3 All-State signal caller went through his entire senior campaign without a single interception, throwing for over 1,900 yards and 20 TDs. Gonzalez also led OLSM to the state title. This versatile athlete also averaged 16 and 10 for the Eaglets basketball team, a team that went a perfect 20 and 0 and another state championship. He can run and he was tall and he had a strong arm and he was a, a, a he knew what he was doing out there. You had to prepare really hard for him. Uh, our defensive coaches re really worked hard. And, you know, they were always very difficult to beat. Orchard Lake just has a phenomenal program anyway, and they're so versatile with their run game. And to have a quarterback with his ability, being able to throw the ball as well as run the ball, was definitely a tough task for us to, to handle. Uh, when you play any of those Catholic League teams, the first thing that you have to do is you have to be mentally tough because it's going to be taxing. They're going to wear on you, and they're going to do some things well. Gonzalez went on to play for the Michigan Wolverines. Number 17, Jim Sorgi, Frazier. 
another late 90s Mac Conference maniac, Frazier's Jim Sorgi did major damage with his arm that earned him first team all league, county, and state honors, including Tom Markowski's Detroit News Dream Team in 1998. Sorgi set 17 school passing records as a senior. Sorgi threw for 1,763 yards with 19 touchdowns. It changed my whole thinking about football because he was so elusive in throwing the ball. And I think the thing that I learned from Sorgi is that you better put a lot of speed on the field because great quarterbacks, you just can't let them have any time. And we probably at that point started putting faster and faster people on the defensive line. One of the things that I can remember about Jim Sorge is he gave a speech at the All-Star Game. And it was probably one of the best speeches that I can remember from uh, any kid that, that was there. He was uh, beyond his years. And then when we had James Stallings was coming up, Jim helped recruit him to Wisconsin. So he came to a few of our games and he was just a, you know, just a fine young man and he always had presence in, in the pocket. He could, he could throw it as well as run it. And I think what Ray Bard did with him over there was just outstanding. Sorgi had an outstanding college career at Wisconsin and was a backup to Peyton Manning on the 2007 Super Bowl champion Indianapolis Colts. Number 16, Dane Fife, Clarkston. One of two Clarkston QBs to make our list, although his real claim to fame came on the basketball court, the McDonald's All-American and Mr. Basketball Dane Fife threw daggers for the Wolves on the football field. In 1996, Dane was deadly accurate, completing 118 of his 220 attempts, nearly 2,000 yards passing his senior campaign in which the Wolves went 9-0 during the regular season. Dane Fife graduated with over 4,000 career passing yards. Dane was a little bit undisciplined, but that's what made him good. He was a little bit uh, freelancer, but that was, that's what made him good. He liked to go back and make things happen. Um, probably the biggest thing with Dane is he was kind of handicapped by our offense at that time because, you know, nobody was running the spread, nobody was dual threat. If he was in today's offense, he would really be, he'd really be something. I thought he had a tremendous arm. He could throw, throw well on the run. With their offense, even today, Clarkson's quarterbacks have to run the ball and they have to throw it to make them um, successful. A sought after football and basketball recruit, Fife ultimately chose hoops to play for Bobby Knight at Indiana. He is the all time leader in steals for the Hoosiers, was the defensive player of the year for the 2002 national runner ups. Following a brief pro career in the CBA, Dane turned to coaching and is currently Tom Izzo's assistant for Michigan State basketball. Number 15, Ladarius Jefferson, Muskegon. Our most recent winner of the Hungry Howie's Mr. Football Award, Muskegon's Man of Steel, Ladarius Jefferson. Following a junior season in which he shared snaps with All-Stater Khalil Pippleton, Ladarius steamrolled any and all who stood in his way his senior year. An exceedingly rare combination of bruising brute strength, along with an accurate aerial attack, over his final two seasons, Jefferson rolled, rushing for over 2,000 yards, 33 touchdowns to go along with over 1,200 passing yards, 21 touchdowns, just two interceptions. The Big Reds advanced to the state finals his junior and senior years, and Ladarius brought back home the state hardware for the first time in a decade in 2017. I knew he could really throw the ball, and uh, against us, they didn't need to throw the ball, so they didn't. Uh, I thought we were playing a single wing team. He lined up back there in the pistol, and they snapped it to him, and he ran behind that gigantic line. And no matter if we thought we had a good defensive play, it was four yards and four yards and a first down. Really a dynamic player. I'm anxious to see what he does at Michigan State. You know, I think he might be a quarterback, might be a running back. They don't know. He was truly a pocket quarterback that, in my career, as eight years as head coach, the first quarterback to look to extend the play after the pocket broke down. You know, most guys, once the pocket broke down, wanted to take off run with it and, and you know, move the sticks. The Darius always liked to extend the play and use his arm and be a threat all the way up until he couldn't do it anymore. And then he would take off and use his legs. So tough, the uh, leader did everything right, always showed up on time. He was always, in the, he was a locker room guy, worked hard. There's no question about a student of the game and had a, uh, you know, I'm not gonna lose type mentality. Ladarius will take his talents to East Lansing in the fall, where he will play a different role in the backfield, now a running back, carrying the rock for the Spartans. Number 14, Devin Gardner, Inkster. 
Inkster's Devin Gardner was another outstanding talent who could beat you with his legs and his arm. Legendary coach Greg Carter put Inkster on the map in 2008 and Gardner led the way. As a junior, Devin Dynamite had a combined 48 touchdowns with 3,300 yards of total offense. That led to an ESPN Elite 11 invite. His senior season, stellar. For example, the Vikings' playoffs hopes all but dashed as Inkster faced a must-win at Ohio powerhouse Steubenville. They were riding a nation-leading 60-game home win streak. Down by one with less than a minute left, Gardner tossed a 63-yard touchdown for the win as part of a 330-yard, five-touchdown effort. Inkster advanced to the state finals that season. Just a phenomenal player, man, a big game player, guy that brought a different dimension. We never had a quarterback like him, you know, with the size and the speed and the athleticism. Uh, making big plays on a regular basis. Just the way he went about playing football, it was almost video game-ish. You, when you watched him play, you saw what kids do on Madden in college football. This dude just extended plays. He made some things that we call look very, very difficult, and then it'll look good at the end. And so uh, uh, he was definitely an exciting player to watch, uh, but he played with, like, the, like I said, that level of confidence. He's very, very accurate. Um, his, his arm strength is, is unmatched. Devin went on to a career with the Michigan Wolverines at both quarterback and receiver, and he's still in football. Devin signed with the Canadian Football League Saskatchewan Rough Riders this summer. Number 13, Brendan K, Marine City. The 6'4", 230-pound K crushed it during his two years running the Mariner offense. As a senior, K took his team to a state championship in 2007. K accumulated over 4,100 yards of offense with 67 touchdowns in just two years. Brennan had that ability to throw the ball, to run the ball, but he's also such a competitor and he knew the game, so he, the, the game really slowed down for him. You know, we've had other quarterbacks before getting all panicky, this, that, and the other. He, he slowed the game right down. He, the kid had an air of confidence about him. He knew what he was doing. He knew what everyone else was doing. We only faced Brendan one time, and that was in a seven-on-seven -seven tournament at Dakota. And I saw this big fella come out, and he was throwing the ball. I said, um, you got to be kidding me. This guy's, I, I thought he was a guard, and uh, he was a quarterback, and he could sling it around. K did go on to play for the Bearcats of Cincinnati, where he was the American Conference Player of the Week on multiple occasions, garnering up over 5,000 total yards and 40 touchdowns in 2012 and 2013 combined. Number 12, Cody Cater, Montague. Montague's Cody Cater finished his high school career a two-time All-Stater, a 6'3 dual threat Mr. Football candidate. His senior campaign included being named the AP's Division 5-6 Player of the Year. Cater smashed all school records with nearly 6,500 career passing yards, 79 touchdowns. Plus, he put the Wildcats on his back his junior and senior years, guiding the Wildcats to the 2008 and 2009 state championships. Montague went 27-1 in Cody's last two seasons. Watching Cody, they won back-to-back -back state titles at Montague. Granted, it was Division VI, but there's been other really good quarterbacks in this state as well that played in the lower divisions, and all you got to do, when you, it's, it's the eyeball test. Granted, their competition wasn't as good as, you know, a Muskegon playing from that side of the state, or even, you know, Mona Shores or whomever. But once you saw him perform and play at Fort Field and win. Just watching him play, you know, on highlights, being a West Michigan guy, you just knew that he was a tremendous player and a high character kid too, you know. So I know they feel, you know, really good about Cody and, and what he contributed to high school football and then on into college. So impressive young man, you know, very physically dominant. After high school, Cater found himself on a roller coaster that included committing to Central Michigan, then instead going to Cincinnati, then to junior college, and back to CMU where injuries cut his college football career short. Cody is currently on the coaching staff, back at Montague. Number 11, John Wassing, Grand Rapids South Christian. The class of 2015 was a talented year for quarterbacks. A couple were responsible for leading their team to Ford Field three years in a row. Grand Rapids South Christian's John Wasink was one of them. Currently sitting fourth all time in MHSAA career passing yards with 8,124, his 884 attempts is fifth all time. 
Wasink was such a weapon, he's also third all-time in career completions with 584. 35 and seven as a starter his senior year, 37 TDs, almost 3,500 total yards. John led the Sailors to two state championships in 2012 and 2014. What I expected out of Wasink, looking at some of the things that I knew about him before he got to Ford Field, I always thought of him as a runner, just the style that South Christian would play. He wasn't just a runner. He, he could throw the ball, and he proved that at the next level. Now, at Western Michigan, Wasink looks to bounce back for the Broncos this fall after a back injury shut him down last season. It's time to kick off summer with the official summer craving because summertime is Coney time with National Coney Island. So grab a Coney, a drink, and a sign, and let's kick off summer. National Coney Island, the official craving of summer. I want a career in robotics and automation, so I chose Lawrence Tech for its first in Michigan robotics engineering program. LTU's brand new STEM complex has a robotics lab where we can design, build, and program robots in a creative atmosphere. And the best thing is, I haven't graduated yet, but I already have a job in my field. I know I made the right choice for my career. Lawrence Tech, possible is everything. It's tough to improve on an original, and Snethcamp is Metro Detroit's original Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram dealer. We sell vehicles that are up for a challenge. And when it comes to our sales and service experience, that's the same way we do business. This is who we are, and this is what we do. Don't miss the summer clearance event at Snethcamp on Telegraph at Plymouth Road in Redford. Snethcamp, Metro Detroit's original. Snethcamp, Snethcamp. It's time to kick off summer with the official summer craving because summertime is Coney time with National Coney Island. So grab a Coney, a drink, and a sign. And let's kick off summer. National Coney Island, the official craving of summer. Welcome back to State Champs 25 in 25, ranking the top quarterbacks of the last 25 years. Number 10, DJ Zazula, Clarkston. The second Clarkston great on the list, DJ Zazula was dominant. As a starter, Zazula went 38-2 for the Wolves, then included a 27-game winning streak. DJ was under center for back-to-back -back state titles that included an undefeated season in 2014. He threw for well over 5,000 yards and 48 touchdowns in his career, but also had great mobility, rushing for nearly 1,600 yards with 24 more scores. This included a 70-yard run in the 2014 state championship. Zezula was the people's champion in our state champs 2014 Mr. Football race, earning the most votes overall. DJ overcame lifelong injuries that would have sidelined most mere mortals, proof while the kids in the neighborhood started wearing number five jersey because DJ is their hero. There was numerous times where DJ just took over and uh, said, hey, you know, hop on my back and we're gonna win this thing. That's what made him such a good, good leader for us. The thing about DJ is, number one, how he did play over injuries his sophomore and junior year. And then, you know, the biggest thing about DJ he was just a winner. I think he ended up 39 and two or something in his career. I mean, he's pretty darn good. He's another kid that was accurate. He also had good feet and a real good leader. You know, we didn't play him a lot uh, when he was there. We played him one time, I think. And uh, I know that we uh, really worked hard on pass rush against him because we didn't want him to handle the ball uh, a lot. And, uh, and he came through. He came through for them, no question about it. Zezula signed with Wayne State for both football and baseball. And it wasn't long before he became just the fourth true freshman to ever start a quarterback for the Warriors. He's set to start his senior season where he already boasts the all-time best marks in passing efficiency and yards per attempt. 
Number 9. Kirk Cousins, Holland Christian. Kirk Cousins was a two-year starter for coach Tim Laund. Captain Kirk set 35 offensive school records, leading the Maroons to their first ever playoff appearance in 2006. By the time he committed to new Michigan State head coach Mark D'Antonio, Cousins had racked up 3,200 plus yards with 40 touchdowns. You like that? I thought this kid was good. Thought he was good. Uh, to his credit, I did not think that he'd be a, uh, uh, you know, he'd be getting a franchise tag in the NFL. You know, but I know I thought he was good. I thought he was a, a bona fide Big Ten quarterback. That kid's a bright, hardworking kid. And, uh, and he made it work, like I said, but, but you know, I'm just looking at film and you're looking, oh yeah, this kid's really good. Remind me a lot of our quarterback. And, uh, but boy, for the career he's had, uh, hats off. He's a true tribute to what it is to be a student athlete, to be a high school athlete in the state of Michigan that has gone on to do really great things, and not just in pro football, but in the larger scale of life. MSU won a share of the 2011 Big Ten Championship under Cousins tenure, and he went 4-0 versus Michigan. Drafted by the Washington Redskins during his six seasons, Cousins has thrown for over 16,000 yards with 99 touchdowns. Kirk recently signed a three-year deal with the Minnesota Vikings. Number eight, Cooper Rush, Lansing Catholic. Clearly one of the best quarterbacks to come out of the state in the last 25 years, Lansing Catholic's Cooper Rush led his team to back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons that included a run to the state finals in 2011. Rush graduated with the state record for touchdowns in a single season with 48 and his third all-time with over 4,000 in a season. His nearly 7,500 career yards is top 10 all-time. Tremendous drop-back quarterback. I don't know, watching him play, I, I thought for sure, that he was going to be a, a very good player at the next level. Was he a, a Big Ten type of player? Was he a MAC type of player? Personally, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't tell which one he was. I just knew this kid had all the tools, and that somebody was going to benefit from that. Rush was a four-year starter at Central Michigan, and is currently backing up Dak Prescott on the Dallas Cowboys. Number seven, Travis Smith, Ithaca. Now legend to the town of Ithaca, Travis Smith will always be talked about when measuring any and all future Yellow Jackets. Travis never lost a game during his high school career. How many can say that? 41 and 0. Here are the numbers. Fifth all time in the state with just over 8,000 career passing yards. Second in passing touchdowns with 104. The Jackets won four straight state titles during Travis's tenure and the team held the longest win streak in the nation. Definitely a big time competitor. I was a part of coaching him with our uh, hype program, hype seven on seven program that Justin Sassanti started. And then we ended up going over to Legacy and I was a part of that program as well and still able to see his off season work. He was just so consistent with coming in, completing passes and uh, making sure his team won. I, I have not seen that kid lose a lot of football games. I think that's because he's a hybrid competitor just like a lot of the different guys on that list. What I remember about him too statistically, he didn't throw a lot of interceptions which I'm sure made Terry Hesbrook real happy in, in the fact that, you know, he, you know, if that wasn't there, throw the ball away and, and you know, live for another day. Playing at Division VI, you know, they go 9-0 and against, you know, inferior competition. How you judged uh, Travis was when he got to the state playoffs and won there. Smith and college football just never worked out. With spots at Wake Forest, Eastern Michigan, and later Central Michigan, that is where he currently resides, although unrostered. Number six, Alex Malzone, Birmingham Brother Rice. There is a strong argument that Alex Malzone is the best quarterback to have ever suited up for Brother Rice. Despite a plethora of great former Warrior signal callers, Money Malzone owns the Rice record book in all of the top categories. The 2014 Hungry Howie's Mr. Football Award winner capped off a state championship hat trick as the starting QB for the final two titles during that stretch. As a junior, this four-star recruit led the Warriors to a 14-0 record. Although not a state champ as a senior, Malzone led the state in passing with 3,000 yards, a 65% efficiency rate, 38 touchdowns, 69 in his career. And all of this while every year playing one of the toughest schedules in the state. Dream Teamer, M Live, and Gatorade Player of the Year. 
I remember him when he was a ninth grader. I said, boy, this kid is going to be something. And, you know, he grew mentally and he grew physically and he got better and better. I remember the quarterback camps we had. He was the guy that was demonstrating how to throw the ball and how to uh, find receivers and get the ball off quickly. That's very important to see your people get into in the open. And he had that knack of getting the ball there. Malzone was one of the most accurate guys I saw. And, uh, you know, he could run a little bit, but mainly he was a pocket quarterback and he'd come off play action or something and he would really throw the ball well. In the scheme of things, he won a lot of games. And that's what makes quarterbacks great. Knowing how to win games and knowing how to run the system to make sure you can win and try to make sure you can fill in the gaps when you see things. I think that's what made him a great player because he understood what Brother Rice wanted and he understood the scheme of things. And hey, when you win a lot of championships like that, you gotta be great. One of Brady Hoke's recruits at Michigan, Malzone honored his commitment after Hoke was fired, stayed at U of M, although not part of Jim Harbaugh's plan. But Alex has two years left of eligibility and as a graduate transfer will compete for the starting job at Miami of Ohio in the fall of 2018. My passion is architecture. I don't want to sit around passively studying. I need to create. In our architecture studios at Lawrence Tech, we collaborate with students, faculty, and professionals from around the world. And from day one, we design using the same industry standard software that architecture firms use. I really feel like I'm designing my own future here. Lawrence Tech, possible is everything. Are you stuck in your job? Getting frustrated playing the waiting game for the next opportunity to advance your career? Let Blue Chip Talent help. As an award-winning talent acquisition company, our specialty is matching candidates with careers in IT and engineering. At Blue Chip Talent, we take a laser-focused approach to reaching your career goals. We have access to jobs you won't find anywhere else to help advance your career faster and easier. Plus, we take care of you. Employees receive industry-leading benefits and competitive perks. Don't waste another minute worrying because we are ridiculously good at advancing careers. Since the dawn of man, storytelling has been the most effective and engaging means of communication. Whether gathered around the warm glow of a fireplace or the family television set, a compelling story has always moved people to action. At Yellow Flag Productions, the Emmy-winning storytellers behind our television programs are now helping clients create content that emphasizes their people and passions. Let us tell your story and share it with the world. Welcome back to State Champs 25 in 25, ranking the top quarterbacks of the last 25 years. Number five, Kevin Glenn, Detroit St. Martin DePores. Although closed for well over a decade now, Detroit DePores High School will be remembered as one of the greatest sports schools ever. 39 state championships in total. A four-year, three-sport star quarterback in the mid-90s, Kevin Glenn. Considered to be undersized, Glenn cast aside the doubters, grabbed the starting job as a freshman. One of the best ever at throwing on the run, Glenn was the guts and glue for DePores. Check these career stats. Over 6,200 passing yards, 68 touchdowns. Over 2,500 yards rushing, more than 25 scores. This against the wicked Catholic League Central West Division that included Detroit Catholic Central and Orchard Lake St. Mary's. With new head coach Greg Carter, the Eagles won back-to-back -back double C titles with Glenn under center in 95 and 96. That, their ninth and 10th respectively. Glenn won a basketball state title to boot. Actually, I don't think Kevin was going to attend DePores, but he wound up coming to DePores. I think the Detroit Public Schools uh, may have been on strike. And so his mother didn't want him out of school, so he wound up at the poise, and it was definitely a blessing for us. He had an opportunity as a ninth grader to start and be our quarterback. Led us to two state championships his last two years, his junior and senior year. Got better each and every year. Uh, gets mad right now um, that we allow our quarterback to do so much more than he was able to do when he was a quarterback here. But just an outstanding guy, definitely a leader. Just phenomenal player had the, the scrambling ability to get out of pocket and extend plays, but also had a, a very strong ability with sitting in the pocket and delivering passes to outside receivers, inside receivers, tight ends. 
Uh, Coach Carter did a phenomenal job at developing a system that fit the nuances of football, yet maintained the, the poise and the integrity that, that uh, DePores football was all about, which was uh, running the football inside the tackle. So Kevin May, we did look very, very good. Determined to remain a QB, Glenn went on to play at Illinois State where he set 25 school records. Glenn has competed at the highest level in the Canadian Football League for 17 years and is still playing. Considered one of the best QBs in CFL history. Continually having to prove himself, Glenn is the only player to have his rights held by every single team in the league. Number 4 Jason Fracasa, Sterling Heights Stevenson. The grandson of legendary coach Al Fracasa, Jason Fracasa was quite simply a four-year phenom. At the time of his graduation, Jason owned six MHSAA passing records, including yards in a season and a career, attempts and completions in a season and a career. His most impressive over 10,000 career passing yards are 2,000 better than second place. In 2009, Fracasso won the State Champs Mr. Football Award, scoring over 28 points per game in a season that got his Titans to the state championship game. He was also Gatorade Player of the Year and a Dream Teamer. I remember him throwing the ball when he was three or four years old. I mean, uh, he started really young and he became really good at it. And uh, in a way, I'm glad that he went to another school because I didn't have the pressure of the grandfather coaching the grandson, you know? And if he did very well, they would probably, a lot of people would say, well, look what he did, you know? He let him play all the time. But he broke all the records in Michigan. Well, he's your gunslinger. You know, I don't know if that term was around at that time, if they were calling quarterbacks gunslingers, but that's what he was. I mean, he just got back and winged it. He was uh, very accurate, too. That was one of the things that I really liked about him. He could throw the ball. You know, put it on the, on the money, and then he also could throw the deep ball as well. I think he was fearless, and he was a kid that, because of his background and his, his of course, his uh, grandfather, he'd been around football all his life, and he was a natural. And uh, I think that's what uh, really skyrocketed him to the top. Fracasa accepted a scholarship to play both football and baseball at Northwood University. He eventually transferred to Walsh University in Ohio, where he finished up with a solid year and a half at QB. Number three, Keith Nickel, Lowell. Back to the left coast, and one who, like Devin Gardner, played both receiver and quarterback in college, only this time at Michigan State. A highly sought after recruit, this two-time Class A Associated Press Player of the Year was a three-year starter in Noel Dean's offense. Keith carved up over 9,600 career yards, 134 touchdowns. As a sophomore in 2004, Nickel led the Red Arrows to a state title. Keith was an amazing player, but more so a person. He was. Just a hard-working, uh, dedicated, uh, that treated people really, really well. I think my best quarterbacks all treated everybody else really well, whether they were football players or not. And uh, you know, and Keith just had an amazing arm strength, and he could run really well. And uh, you know, so he did a lot of pretty crazy things for us. And you know, I really enjoyed coaching him. He was just, uh, you know, one of those once-in-a-while talent. He was a challenge. Every time you went into the game, you're like. You know, you always have to identify that player on offense. Well, it was a no-doubter. Keith Nickel was the guy you had to stop. He could beat you with his arm. He could beat you with his legs. He was also going to, you know, he'd run over you if he had to, run around you if he had to. Um, he, and you know what? Here's the other thing. He was a classy young man, classy kid to coach against, very humble. Uh, he was just a gentleman on the field and off the field. And that has gone forward today in his career as you watch him prosper in, in, the, in, the, in the world today after a great career at Michigan State. Keith began his college career at Oklahoma as Sam Bradford's backup, transferred to Michigan State, and contributed under center as well as a split end. Keith caught at least one pass in 24 games and completed 54% of his passes. Number two, Drew Henson, Brighton. When you begin to design and define what a super elite multi-sport athlete looks like, Drew Henson is who you draw up. 
a baseball and football megastar in the mid-90s, Drew was devastating. Hitting a national record 70 home runs, a 40-game winner on the mound with well over 500 strikeouts on the diamond on the gridiron. 18-3 his final two years, Henson completed 400 passes for over 5,600 yards, amassing 52 touchdowns for the Bulldogs. He was the National Player of the Year in both sports. We went against Drew in passing league over at Eastern Michigan. And I knew his dad real well from recruiting for Eastern, you know. His size and his arm were amazing. I was a baseball coach too, so we were amazed with his baseball ability, both of them. Outstanding two-way athlete. Drew Henson was so far above physically in my 35 years of coaching, I've never seen a kid, a junior in high school, look like he looked. I mean, he was a man playing with boys. He was strong. He threw it like a pro then. To this day, I'll say he is by far the best high school athlete I've ever seen. He was a kid that lived up to that hype. I mean, he came through in the big games, and I know they didn't win a lot in the playoffs. In fact, they only made the playoffs one time, but back then, not as many teams made the playoffs as they do now, so that those numbers are a little bit askew. But as far as his ability, I mean, everything was there. His, his size, his weight, his strength, his speed. Henson chose football at the collegiate level and had an outstanding career at Michigan. Drew was drafted by the Houston Texans and by the New York Yankees. Drew chose baseball, never really panned out in the bigs, came back to football in 2004, spending time with the Dallas Cowboys, Minnesota Vikings, and the Detroit Lions. Drew is now back in baseball as a scout for the Yankees. Number one. Drew Stanton, Farmington Hills Harrison. This Oregon boy moved to Southeast Michigan after his sophomore year. First order of business, find a great football program. Our number one high school quarterback in the past 25 years, none other than Drew Stanton. The Stanton family picked to play for, who is now, Michigan's all-time winningest coach, Farmington Hills Harrison's John Harrington. When Drew first came here, he had just uh, left Oregon and had been in a uh, big baseball tournament and his arm was sore. So I said, well, he's a big kid. It, he can throw a little bit, you know, but I got a game Shabai, who was really a good quarterback uh, coming back. Then uh, his father was looking for a place because he'd relocated over here. And then uh, I went on vacation. I came back and Drew's there and then he's throwing the ball all over the place and looking great. And of course, then I got to, uh, to know him a little bit and knew what type of kid he was. Actually, he didn't start the first two games for us his junior year. But then I wised up and he started all the rest. Man, high school football to me is still some of the best memories. You know, and I've been fortunate to, to play in every Big Ten stadium, to play some big time college football games, to play in the NFL, um, again, to go to Lambeau Field, and to, to play at some of the most historical sites that you can play football in. But Buller Field to me will always hold a special place in my heart because of the memories, the friendships, that were formed there. During his two years at the helm of the Hawks, Stanton led his teams to back-to-back -to -back D3 state titles in 2000 and 2001. The latter, a perfect 14-0. 259 total yards and three scores in the 2001 championship game. He was an exceptional player because he could read the defense and he could place that ball in tight windows. He had a very strong arm. He, under, he could put that ball there. I liked that a lot. When I saw him play, I was like, wow, that's a quarterback. That's what I said. Drew threw for almost 3,000 career yards, 60 touchdowns. He had a 65% completion rate. Free Press and Detroit News Dream Teamer, Super Prep, Prep Star, and Max Emfinger All-American. Four national publications ranked Drew Stanton among the top 20 quarterbacks in the nation in 2001. There's the question, should it be this Drew or that Drew? And you could go around a table and have everybody give their two cents worth on it. Personally, Stanton won state titles. Stanton, you know, was that winner consistently. Henson was an outstanding quarterback. He put up great numbers. And maybe, you know, obviously his, his supporting cast wasn't as good as at Harrison. But I, I look... And I did that when I was with the Detroit News, too. If I look at a quarterback that was 13-0, and 0 as opposed, and all things being equal, as opposed to a quarterback that went 7-2, and 2, lost first round of the playoffs, I would side with that 13-0. and 0. It's an extreme honor. You know, you look at, at the history of guys that, 
have come through here that have played quarterback in the state of Michigan. A lot have gone on to great careers, you know, and a lot of guys were phenomenal high school players. So to be able to carry that torch is something that, that uh, is an extremely high honor for me. You look at guys like Drew Henson, Kirk Cousins, Keith Nichols, you know, those are the guys that come off the back because they're my friends, but also guys that, that were very highly touted, guys that went on to have great careers, that, that were high school quarterbacks that are legends in their own right. So to be able to be at the top of that list for the last 25 years is something that, that is very nice to be able to hang my hat on. But at the same time, football is a team game. The quarterback gets a lot of credit and we were 28-0, you know, my two years there. We ended up, I think, number five in the nation in the USA Today. The players that were around me made me the player that I was and that I continue to be. And I know that, I realize that, but it's an honor that, that I, I'm very proud to accept. At Michigan State, Stanton earned academic All-American status. He threw for over 6,500 yards, 42 touchdowns, and was drafted with the 43rd overall pick by the Detroit Lions in 2007. Besides the Lions, Drew spent the last four seasons with Arizona. This past offseason, he signed a two-year deal with the Cleveland Browns. Congratulations, Drew Stan. Hey, thanks for watching, and you can chime in on the conversation on all our State Champs social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm Lauren Plant, and we'll see you next time for another installment of State Champs 25 in 25. State Champs 25 in 25 is presented by Lawrence Technological University. Possible is everything. The Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. Hungry Howie's Dough Raiser, your next fundraiser comes with flavored crust. And National Coney Island, home of the official craving of summer. National Coney Island, doggone good.